The scripture reading this morning comes from the New Testament. It's going to be Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. And in the Pew Bible, you can follow along on page 5 of the New Testament. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Thanks be to God. You may notice on the side some rather large post-it notes, courtesy also of Rob. These are the biggest ones I've ever seen. When I was in second grade growing up, we also studied the Lord's Prayer. And the way we did that is we broke the class up and every kid got to write a particular section of it. I remember mine very specifically, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I drew a picture of Jesus and me on a cloud flying away from a devil who's shaking his little pitchfork at us as we're trying to get away. And I thought it would be nice to have a chance for the children of our church, this is all the ages that wanted to, to write or draw something that they thought of when they read the Lord's Prayer. So as you come by, this is just a visual aid, something that you can see that helps you understand what we're reading, something from the mind of our kids. So, why do you pray? Why? Why do we pray together? Do you do it because you've always done it, or do you do it because you've been told that you should? What about when? When do you pray? Is it part of your bedtime routine? Something to do after you put on your PJs, brushing your teeth each night, I hope. And when you get ready to sleep, or do you do it in the morning when you wake up to say thank you God for a new day, for a new chance to go out while you're pulling on your shoes, and your shirt, getting ready for school, work, whatever you might be doing that day, or do you do it in the middle of the day, maybe during lunch? Do you pray to say thank you, or is it only when sad things or bad things happen? We all have different times and different places when we pray, and, and that's all right. In fact, it's better than all right, it's actually great. God does not care when or where or why we're praying to him, he just wants us to do it. Praying to God is our best connection to him. It is the best way to speak to him because it lets us talk to him, just like we would talk to one another. We have tons of examples from the Bible, from all over the world of people who know how to talk to God and they do it as they would talk to one another. One of my favorite prayers is one that you might already know. So raise your hand, all of you, if you've ever heard something like this, God is great, God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By his hands we all are fed. Thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. Amen. Now there's one more, again, you may have heard. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And he shall hold me through the night and wake me with the morning light. That bring anybody back to being tucked in? It does for me. When I pray, for me, it's usually later at night before bed, but I also try very hard to pray throughout the day. Not just at specific times, because that's kind of, you get into a pattern. It's nice to pray to God as though you were talking to him. Now, sometimes when I pray to God, it's like a picture. My hands are clasped, my head is bowed, my eyes are shut. But sometimes it doesn't look like that at all. 
Sometimes it looks a lot like I'm just talking to myself. Maybe it's in the car, maybe I'm walking somewhere, or even just using the computer or the phone to try to find something. I talk to God just like I would talk to Pastor Rob, or talk to my wife, or talk to one of my friends. And I'll ask what God thinks of this idea or that idea or try to answer a hard question as it comes. My eyes might be open, which is a good thing to do while you are driving. Or maybe I'll be standing up and my hands are working. Maybe I'm cleaning or doing or fixing something to prepare. But I do it while I pray. It doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm taking time to spend it and talk with God. No matter what you do, you can pray to God, and quite often I've found whatever it is you're doing, you'll do it better while you pray to God. Now, in all the Bible and in all the world, who do you think was the best at praying to God? You can answer with the Sunday school answer. That's right, it was Jesus. You've probably talked about him a little bit in Sunday school already, and because Jesus was God's son, he knew how to speak to the Lord better than any of us possibly could. His 12 disciples, his closest friends, listened to everything he said. They watched him carefully because they could tell that Jesus knew how to follow God and knew how to pray to God. Think of someone that you look up to someone you know well that you want to be like. Think how you watch them, how you try to do what they do. And I'll bet you ask them a lot of questions as well. In the scripture that Jamie just read us, Jesus is talking to the disciples and to a whole crowd of people because they asked Jesus lots and lots and lots of questions. And one of them was, how do we pray like you do? And Jesus answered with a prayer that's one of the oldest in the New Testament. And we call it, in the New Testament, did I say that? I can't remember. Either way, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Because Jesus is Lord, and it's his prayer. Now you know. That's all. He starts with our Father who art in heaven. In the language that Jesus spoke, there's a different word for Father. It was Abba. So, if you will, try saying that with me now. Abba. Think really hard about what a baby sounds like when it's just starting to make sounds. Something a little bit like Abba, ba, 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 ba. You know, baby talk. Abba doesn't just mean father, it's closer to daddy. God loves you so much and wants you to be so close to him that you would talk to him like a kid talks to their dad. Isn't that cool? And remember, this is Jesus, so you know this is the right way that you're supposed to address God. God loves you like a dad loves his little kid and wants you to talk to him in the same way. The next part is hallowed be your name. Now, hallowed's a weird word, and some of you may have heard it. Maybe you haven't. It's not something we use a whole lot, but hallowed just means holy. Jesus is saying that God, your name is holy. Your name is so holy that just, wow, really, really holy. More holy than we have words for. And I had a story that it makes me think of when I tried to think of how do you describe this feeling because we just don't really have a good word for describing this. When I grew up, there was a lot of really big, really old pine trees in our backyard. We're talking big, like old. And every year during the winter, snow would come. I know that's rare around here, but where I lived, it happened. And every year we'd hear a crash in the night or during the day of a huge tree tumbling down in the woods back there. And over time, my parents got worried that one day it might fall on our house and smash it like a Lego tower. So we called out some lumberjacks. They did, I was seven at the time. And the lumberjacks came with their saws and their drills and their ropes and they tied it up the tree and they climbed up it and prepared it and they got to work just pulling and sawing down the base. And as I watched with my eyes huge from the porch, this huge old tree started to wave and sway and started to lean and creep. 
and I could hear the crash from hundreds of feet away. I could feel the crash. You ever felt the ground shake when something huge lands near you? And all I could think watching that tree come crashing down was, wow. That, I think, is the feeling Jesus is trying to get across when he says, God, your name is holy. Wow. That little feeling of being completely unable to say anything or do anything other than stand amazed, to stand in awe is another word for it. That's what Jesus was trying to say. Part of our prayer is to say that God's name is hallowed and we need to respect him. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I asked before, when you pray, what do you pray for? What's on your mind when you pray? Do you do it for money or for friends or for fun or for other people? What's your reason? Why do you pray? I remember when I was little and I learned about prayer. I found out that God both answers prayer and he can do anything. Now that's a pretty good combination. So I started thinking and I set my brain to it and I thought and thought and thought a little bit more and finally it came to me and I figured it out. So I went to my mom and dad and proudly sat on the swing set and said, I'm going to pray for a million dollars. As I proudly sat swinging back and forth, I couldn't figure out why didn't mom and dad think, oh, that's so cool. Good job, Paul. Instead, they smiled and just looked at each other and then looked back at me. And my mom asked, well, do you need a million dollars? And so I, I hadn't thought about that question. So I went back to thinking and swinging. And after a little while, I decided, you know what? No, actually, I don't need a million dollars. Well, my parents then told me a little bit more about prayer, how it's not just for what you want. It's to ask God for what you need and to ask God what he wants to do in your life. When we pray your kingdom come, your will be done, it's not just a fancy rhyme. It's saying, God, I want you to do what you want, not what I want. That can be hard to pray sometimes, no matter how old you are, how young you are, or where you live. We all like to be in charge and to do it ourselves, don't we? Jesus tells us that we have to let it go and let God have his way in our life. To give us this day our daily bread. We can all understand that pretty well. Who here likes bread? Okay, the rest of you can leave. No, I'm kidding, that's okay. We can all understand this one pretty well. How often do you like to eat? Once a week? Once a month? Now, I bet you probably like to eat every day, like me. And if you're lucky, like us here in America, you probably get to eat three square meals a day, if you've heard that before. That's not true all over the world. Years ago, when I went on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic, these folks didn't get three square meals a day. These are folks that celebrated every meal. They prayed over every meal because sometimes they didn't know where that next dinner was going to come from but they knew that God was going to provide for them. They knew God would get them what they needed because they asked and because he loved them. In our prayer to God, we ask God to give us our daily bread, just what we need to live on every day. Just a little bit later in that exact chapter, in verse 25, Jesus tells us that we shouldn't worry about what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink because God cares for us and will provide what we need. Our prayers then are to ask God for the things that we need and thank him when he provides them, just like the food that we have every day. We ask to forgive us our sins as we forgive people who sin against us. There's no time in our lives, no matter if you're young, old, big, small, short, tall, that we don't have to ask God to forgive us. And the best part, he always will. Because if we want to be like Jesus, if we want to be like our Savior, that means we have to forgive each other, just like God forgives us, even if people are mean to us, even if they call us names, 
if they insult us, if they believe something differently than we do, we have to forgive them so that we can become more like Jesus. This might be one of the hardest parts of the prayer that Jesus even gave us because it means even people that we don't like, people that we don't understand, people that we don't agree with, we have to pray for them and to forgive them. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or from the evil one. Again, my personal favorite from years ago. And there are a lot of ways in our lives to not make bad decisions. Now, we know there are a lot of ways to make bad decisions, don't we? Now, most of the time as you get older, you start to learn what things are smart to do and what things are less smart to do. When I was growing up, though, my dad gave me some advice. Some advice that I listen to and think about every single day. Just avoid the situation. Just stay away from the problem. Sometimes it's hard to say no when people want us to do something, even if it's the wrong thing to do. Sometimes we feel pressured to look cool, to be a part of the group, or just not start a fight with the person who wants us to do it. But if we avoid being in that situation, if we avoid being near that problem to start with, it avoids a whole lot of trouble. I realize this isn't possible all the time, but that advice has stuck with me as long as I could remember. To just avoid a situation where you know there's going to be problems. So now we have a little bit better idea of what we're actually praying and actually saying when we pray the prayer Jesus gave us. When we pray it alone or when we pray it together as a group or in Sunday school, the cool part is it doesn't matter where or when you pray it. But it also means you don't have to pray exactly like it. You don't have to pray with your head bowed and your eyes closed and reciting the Lord's Prayer word for word unless that's what you feel like you should do. Prayer can look like anything. Do you remember one of the songs we just read or sang? My singing is a prayer. When we stand up here and sing, when we play guitar, when we have fun, these are parts of prayer. This is what prayer looks like. Prayer can look like the choir that was singing here just moments ago. God loves to hear our voices. He loves to hear what we have to say, and he loves us to use the gifts that we have. Some people have the gift of playing music. Some people can teach sign language. Some people are great speakers. Some people are great friends. These are forms of prayer. Again, the people who wrote the hymns that we sing intended them as prayers. My singing is a prayer, O Lord, a prayer of thanks and praise. A prayer doesn't always look like this. Sometimes it looks like this. It can look like dancing. If you remember David, King David, who God said was a man after his own heart. This is David from David and Goliath. He went out and he danced in the streets at the head of a parade. And God called that praise. He called that a prayer. So prayer can look like a celebration. Like last Sunday, we celebrated having new deacons up here. We thank them for coming forward to be deacons, for serving people, and for loving people, and we put our hands on them. That was part of a prayer. Think about all the different ways we see prayer here in the church. Think of the different people in your life and how you've seen them pray. Your parents, your grandparents, your friends, family, people you've never met, television. You can see prayer when you're watching TV. It's not to say you should always do it. Prayer can look like a celebration. Prayer can look like an actual prayer. It can look like a painting. Sometimes we pray together. Sometimes we do it alone. Sometimes we do it as a whole church, like when we pray the Lord's Prayer. There's no one right way to pray. As long as you're praying to God, as long as you're spending time with Him, you're praying like Jesus did. So remember, no matter how you're praying, no matter what you're praying about, just do it. Just pray to the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you didn't pick up on it by the sermon title, my prayer 
my wish for all of you and to myself is to just do it. Just pray. It doesn't matter when you do it. It doesn't matter why you're doing it. If you are praying to the God of the universe who looks down and made you and loves you, you're spending time with Him. And that's what Jesus asked us to do, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And when you take the time to pray, you're doing just that. So may you remember to pray constantly and in all things rejoice. Amen.